everyone, it's Shannon here for Honeybee Stamps. In today's video, I'm going to create this really fun coffee shop card using the awesome house builder dies and add-ons. I'm going to start with the house builder card base die set. This was the original house builder set. This is the set you need to get to play with the add-ons. Here is the coffee shop house builder add-on a honey cut set, so the dies. I'm going to start with both of these to kind of create my card base. I'm going to use that that house kind of frame, house die there from the house builder card base die set to die cut two white pieces of cardstock and a light pink piece of cardstock. This is all going to become kind of the front of my card and my actual card base. I'm now going to die cut out of the front of the pink uh, house front a door from the house builder set and a large window using the coffee shop set. So I just die cut those out to create my openings. Now I'm going to trace these openings onto one of my white uh, house fronts. Again, this, this is actually going to be the front of my card and I want to stamp a scene kind of the coffee shop interior scene on this front here and then I'll cover it up with that pink uh, panel on top of it just kind of add some color to the exterior of the coffee shop. So I've arranged several stamps from the coffee shop add-on stamp set and I'm now going to pick them up with my Misty and I'm going to ink them up with Momento Tuxedo Black. I'm going to do some Copic coloring. This is a Copic friendly ink. So I'm just going to stamp those first set of images there. Now I've arranged a whole bunch more images including a little cup that I'm trying to place on top of a table that I have there. By placing the cup stamp on top of that table that allows me to get it into the right position then pick it up with my Misty and stamp it first before I stamp the table because I do want to mask that that cup so it appears it is on the table not kind of like behind the table so just will have a more uh, realistic look so I went ahead and stamps all those stamps there now I'm going to create my masks real quick so I have the lamp the cup as well as a little kind of I guess creamer or frother cup so I've stamped them onto a piece of full adhesive post-it note and I'm just going to fussy cut those out I was trying to be mindful when I designed this card to <laughs> reduce the amount of masking that I uh, do here. And this is a, still a little bit more masking than I wanted to do. I only wanted to mask off the cup, but I realized that the sign I want to stamp in the background here was actually going to be over the lamp and that frother cup. So I did make masks for that too. But with if you're a plan a little bit more ahead, you could probably arrange things so you don't have to do as much masks, But because I, I do like to try to avoid the masks that I could or if I can. So I did stamp a couple shelves and now I'm just stamping these cups a couple times to fill out the shelves. And I didn't actually mask at all, I just lined up the base of the cup with the top of the shelf and that it does a pretty good job. Now I'm going to take a ruler and a marker here and just kind of really create my countertop for my coffee shop. So I drew a line across that counter and now I'm going to draw a couple lines from the top of the counter down just to really again create that that real look of a countertop. And this goes pretty quick. I do try to make sure to avoid going through the chairs because again, that will kind of ruin the illusion that the chairs are in front of the countertop. So now that I have my whole scene all stamped, I can start to Copic color. I'm gonna start by coloring in the base of my countertop. And I'm just gonna color this kind of like a, a, a light wood color. So I have a couple really light tans picked out. I am being careful here though, trying to avoid coloring the table and the chairs and the cup as well. So I'm, I am taking my time coloring this and just making sure I keep those areas, especially the cup and the base of the table white because I do want to leave those white. I also colored the shelves with that same uh, two tans. I'm now going to actually color in the whites with a light, light blue. I just use this light blue here just to add a little shadow. So I've added a little shadow to the countertop, the cup, the um, table base, as well as the other cups on the shelf. The striped cups I'll actually color later. Now moving on to my pink combo. I picked a combo that hopefully kind of matches or resembles the light pink card uh, stock that I used for the card front earlier. And I just colored the tabletops and the lamps. Moving on to an orange combo for the chairs. Uh, I really like this pink and orange combo. This has been my kind of go-to right now. I just love these two colors together. And now I'm going to take those uh, pink combo and the orange color 
combo and color in the stripes here on these mugs. Now actually when this all comes together most of the stamping here on the shelves get covered up but they do you do see um, some of it on the side of the window and through the door so I do think it's worth kind of stamping it all out. So I now have some grays picked out and I'm going to color in the espresso machine as well as that little frother cup. Uh, doing a little gradation to kind of add again that realistic look and once I finish coloring in this the espresso machine I'm going to go to my really dark combo which is C7 and then black to add some to kind of color in that screen and the handle on the espresso machine as well as this sign in the back that's going to be basically my chalkboard sign my chalkboard menu sign so once I finish kind of blending that out with my C7 I've actually finished that stamp scene and the um, in the interior. Now I have a couple images that I want to uh, color and put uh, outside of the uh, the coffee shop, so the exterior, which is this little sign here, which again I'm coloring with my dark combo, which is C7 and 100, again kind of creating, creating a chalkboard sign, and I did quickly color that plant there, and I'll color the other one in the similar manner. So now that I have those colored, I'm going to actually heat emboss my uh, words on the sign. So I've grabbed some of the tiny word stamps included in the coffee shop stamp set and I'm going to ink them up in Versamark ink and stamp them on to the sign. I did have to trim off the stamp a little bit just so I could fit the two um, stamps really close to each other but if you're more patient and don't try to do it all in one go you don't have to bother trimming them off at all. So I just dipped it into some um, white embossing powder and then heat set and now that I've got that little sign done I'm going to move on to the sign inside the coffee shop and again just stamp and heat emboss some of the words from the stamp set. Now I'm going to take a white gel pen here just because that's easier and add a little details to the sign just to make it look like there's some more writing. And here are those uh, additional images die cut out and ready to add to the card front when I'm at that point. I'm not going to die cut my door, so I die cut the door using some orange cardstock, and now I'm going to take this little oval die here, kind of nestle it into the little scored line to die cut that oval opening. And I've also die cut a top and some steps out of some gray cardstock. I'm going to remove that top step and then I will adhere that on to the door. And all the dies that I'm using here for the door are from the house builder uh, die set, so the original house builder set. And I even die cut out of some mirrored gold cardstock, this little teeny handle, handle that I'll add to the door front and I do actually cover it up in the end with the plant. So don't even have to bother with that if you don't want to. So I'm now going to move on to the awning for the or awning or roof I guess for the um, house or for the coffee shop. I die cut it out of some gray or some green and some white cardstock uh, both the little awning that goes over the window and kind of the roof awning and now I'm going to make these stripes with the two awnings. So I'm cutting the white awning here using a paper trimmer and I'll cut one stripe and then hear it. Then I'll cut a next stripe and toss it <laughs> and then I'll cut the next one and adhere that. So I'm alternating. Um, this I just recommend doing it this way instead of cutting them all at once because it's very easy to kind of get mixed up which stripe goes where unless you're really really careful. So it's easy to just kind of I think it's easier to just take your time cut one stripe uh, glue it down, then cut the next one, throw it away, then cut the next stripe, glue it down. I just think it, it's a slower, but it's a more uh, clear process. You won't get mixed up with your stripes. So I'm now going to do the same thing for this little awning here. And I'm just going to cut them because it's a much smaller thing and just kind of repeat the process. Cut one, adhere, then toss the other, and then adhere the next until I have both of my striped awnings. And I did forget to mention that the awning dies are from the coffee shop add-on uh, honey cut set. So I also stamped that little sign there onto the pink cardstock in Spice Marmalade Distress Oxide and then die cut that out and now I'm going to kind of bring it all together. That completes all my parts. First I just added some tape to the backside of that pink uh, storefront, added that. Now I'm adding some adhesive to the backside of my door, sticking that down. I'm not going to move on to my roof awning, Just I'm going to use some liquid glue for that and stick that down. That gives me just a little bit of wiggle room. I try to use liquid glue whenever I can. <laughs> I'm now going to move on to that little awning over the window. 
Then I'm going to move on to my sign, just use a little bit of glue for that and stack that down. And then I'm ready to kind of finish it up with my die cuts, including my little plants and my sign, and of course that top little um, bit for the door. Now I'm ready to kind of put my card base together. So I have my card front done, and I need to adhere this hinge, which I die cut from using the house builder uh, card base die set out of some heavyweight cardstock, and now I'm gonna add 1 8 of an inch score tape to both sides. Then I'll just fold it right along that score line and kind of make sure it's nice and um, kind of ready to bend. And then I'll remove the backing on the score tape, stick it on to my card front, and then stick it to my uh, my second piece of uh, heavyweight card stock that I die cut with that house builder die. So now I have basically my card base. So really simple. I love that the set includes the hinge. It's really an easy way to me make this kind of shaped card. So I went ahead and stamped a sentiment on the inside. The sentiment is from the coffee stamp set, but I didn't like that I could see my Copic kind of coloring on the backside. So I went ahead and die cut another panel of white cardstock with that house um, frame die and I'm going to add some liquid glue to the back side. I did cut it a little short, about one eighth of an inch short, so it doesn't uh, impede the fold of that hinge. And I just glued that to the back side of my card so that to cover up all that Copic, um, there's just that bleeding that you can see from the back side. I'm not going to move on to my sentiment. I die cut three coffees using the coffee um, honey cuts die set out of some black cardstock. This is the smallest um, die from that set. And I'm gonna stack two of the black coffees on top of each other. Then I will adhere this vellum coffee that I die cut with the second largest coffee word die in that set. This kind of creates a little shadow layer. I just adhered that right on top. And then I'll finish with my final black coffee and just put that right on top. By stacking the two underneath, that gives that a little bit of lift to that vellum. So the vellum's a little bit more opaque and will separate that word a little bit more from that striped kind of awning, which can be a little busy. I do have the sentiment strip here that I stamped using the coffee stamp set onto some black or some gray cardstock in black, and I just added that with some foam squares, and that actually completes my card. I'll now hold it to the camera so you can get a good look at all the details in this coffee shop scene. The sentiment is so fun here. I love you more than coffee. And then the interior I stamped, but please don't make me prove it. That's so cute. And every time I play with these house builder sets and the add-ons, I really feel like I'm kind of playing with a dollhouse. It's so fun to arrange the scenes and just the little miniature images are just so cute. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If you have any questions about the products I used, please check out the links below in the description or head over to Honeybee Stamps. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.